Hi all, here Professor Ravi Kumar uh, from School of Mechanical Engineering, Sasta Dame Tobi University, Tanjavur. I welcome you all to the today's lecture. Today I am going to cover uh, three topics. First, I will be talking about the fluid specifications. Then I will go for basic fundamental uh, definitions of rotation, circulation, vorticity. These are already you may be aware about it, but we will revise it again. And uh, the final topic will be the thrust and power curve for the aircraft. In the prior lex previous lecture, right, where I have discussed about the aerodynamic force calculations, right, on the uh, foil uh, as well as on wing. So we have clearly seen uh, there is a there is a basic difference between the aerodynamic characteristics of an airfoil and aerodynamic characteristics of the wing, and we have uh, we have compared both in the previous lecture. So if you still are having some doubt, please uh, revisit the previous lecture in the series. So today uh, I am going to start with the uh, fluid uh, description or you can say flow description then slowly we will move towards the uh, thrust and power curve for the aircraft. So when we are talking about the flow, flow is nothing but the continuous act of continuous deformation of fluid. Right. So whenever we are specifying a flow, we will use to specify with the velocity, right? That is called resultant velocity. And uh, that resultant velocity will have uh, three components. If we are talking about three dimensional flow domain, if it is a two dimensional flow domain, it will have only two velocity components, right? So usually we say uh, the fluid uh, flow uh, will be uh, described by the velocity vector. Uh, usually we write in this way, ui, vj, and wk this i am writing uh, in the perspective of uh, three dimensional flow domain where u v and w these are the velocity components at, along the x y and z direction so if i say uh, this is x and this is y and this is z i can say in x direction is u y direction is v and z direction is w so i can represent by a velocity vector so uh, if somebody wants to know the magnitude of it just take the modulus of it that is called magnitude and that is just simply under root uh, u square plus v square plus w square like that you can find out the magnitude of the velocity and from the moment you know the velocity vector right you can you can you know uh, basically check for whether the given flow is possible or not so uh, already it is it has been already covered in previous lectures that uh, any flow if we are saying the possible case of fluid flow it must satisfy the continuity equation so continuity equation nothing but if we are writing generic term divergence of density into velocity vector should be zero this is known as continuity equation so the moment if i put uh, the divergence of uh, the product of density and uh, uh, velocity vector uh, that if it is we are getting zero then it is satisfying the continuity because it is a must condition, mandatory condition uh, in order to uh, say the certain flow is possible. So flow will be possible only when it is satisfying the continuity equation that is this divergence of density into velocity, right. So that is a must condition. So this is regarding the flow, right. Uh, so whenever somebody is saying that uh, uh, this is a flow field and flow field will be given by the velocity vector and that velocity vector uh, based on the conditions right you can specify that either two dimensional three dimensional right if it's three dimensional it have u v and w and then steady and steady terms will come if it is on a steady then time variance will also be there so or you can say this u v and w these velocity components will be expressed in terms of time and uh, space coordinates x y and z right that is for unsteady flow it is steady in that case time variate will not be there or time is equal to 1 then u v w will be uh, a function of x y z only all right so this generic uh, you know uh, generally i have given you how to specify a flow and uh, the moment the flow is there somebody is asking you that whether this given uh, flow is a possible case of fluid flow or not you have to put the continuity equation this is the continuity equation uh, generic continuity equation if it is an incompressible flow just remove this density term just divergence of velocity vector if it is zero i can say this as a uh, possible case of fluid flow incompressible right uh, this i generally i have written this will be accounted for both compressible as well as incompressible flow right density is inside just to remove the density it will be form of incompressible flow so this is regarding that now let's we go for the next topic uh, that is uh, rotation right then 
uh, will go for circulation that is a basic difference between these two uh, so second topic is rotation or rotating flow or rotational flow that we used to say as a type of flow in which uh, fluid particles right usually i define in this way so if i consider this is one of the uh, way by which flow uh, is moving so if i consider one single particle right it will be here it is like that and here it got tilted in this way right then it became like this uh, the moment and time then it became like this so like that is keep on you know rotating and finally reaching here uh, so so it is starting from t is equal to 0 and it is going up to t is equal to tn so if you look at the behavior they are rotating basically so uh, rotational flow is that type of flow in which fluid particles while moving along the flow direction right uh, or flow direction or you can say streamline also rotates about their own mass center this is a mass center or you can say cg so uh, while they are rota uh, moving from one point to the other point they are also rotating about their own mass center and such kind of flow is known as a rotational flow and uh, uh, vice versa means it is a rotational flow in that case whatever the initial position of the particle it will be same uh, uh, you know it will be uh, remain the same while the course of motion along the flow right that is one thing or uh, other way you can define a rotational flow is that kind of flow in which uh, the the axis of the particles rotates in the same direction of the flow. So if you look at this, these are the axes. If you consider they are rotating uh, in the same direction, both the axes right are rotating in the same direction while it's moving from one point to another point. Such kind of flow is known as uh, rotational flow. So rotational flow basically how to you know find out? They will be uh, uh, finding out by the rotational components, right? So rotational components basically are uh, three, right? If we are talking about three dimensional flow domain. So for three dimensional uh, 3D flow or uh, three dimensional flow, we say the total rotation vector is nothing but WXI, right? And WYZ and WZK, where WX and WY and WZ, these are the rotational component along the X, Y and Z direction. So how to find out these rotational components, right? That's a big question. So if I say this is equation number one, so I can say WX, right? This is nothing but half Y and Z. If I say W and here V, this is basically WX. Similarly, I can write WY, that is half. And here X, here U, here W and here minus. This is WY. Similarly, WZ can also be written half you see is that so i can write in this way delta x delta y do v do u so these are the three uh, you know uh, rotational components right wx wy wz if we are talking about three dimensional flow domain so the moment if i substitute these all things here right i can get one equation right uh, uh, by adding all this i will get a Total rotation, right? Total rotation in three dimensional domain. But most of the you know practical applications usually we consider 1D flow, right? In which only two velocity components, two variations can be considered, right? U and V. So for 2D flow, uh, right? Uh, generally we say for 2D flow case, 2D flow just you say W Z is required. So this is half, and this term do V divided by do x minus do u divided by do y just this much is enough uh, to find out the uh, rotational component if this rotational component is zero right if the rotational component is zero if I, I will say that is a irrotational flow right that means there is no rotation is present if this term is going to be zero for two dimensional case or or uh, if you three dimensional case if you substitute all these things here and finally magnitude is becoming zero and in that case we will say this is a and a rotational flow, a rotational flow. So, so if you substitute these all things, right? If you want to substitute here, right? If you substitute here, uh, uh, so if one by one, if you put it here, you will get basically nothing but it will become W is equal to basically curl cross velocity vector. Finally, you will get this kind of equation where this is nothing but uh, this is nothing but I do y do x plus z dou y dou y plus k 
do y do z. So this is del operator, right? That you will get, and velocity component will have u i, and this this velocity vector will have u i v z and w k. So if you cross multiply these two, right, you will get some expressions, right, of what you are getting w x i, w y z, and w z k, right. If you substitute both, or you just substitute these all three values of w x, w y, and w z, if you rearrange the terms, right, you will getting the form of uh, the Karlov velocity vector. So if Karlov velocity vector is giving me some value. I will say that is a rotational flow. If Karlov velocity vector is going to be zero, in that case, I will say that is an a rotational flow. So, uh, in potential flow theory, when we will be dealing with potential flow theory, uh, assumption itself is a rotational flow. In that rotation component will not be present. If that is the case, then Karlov velocity vector is zero. Or you can say for a rotational flow, these all w x zero and w y zero and w z zero. This is for a rotational flow. A rotational uh, flow. If there is a rotation, you will have at least one value of rotation component, maybe W X, W Y, W Z, depending on uh, the direction in which you know you are getting the uh, flow. Right. This is one thing. I I don't think so. There will be any doubt in this. Uh, so next to go for vorticity. The rotation is over. So rotation is talking about the rotation of individual particles. If you summarize everything, that will give the total rotation present in the uh, flow domain. Next one is vorticity. That is also very important uh, terminology. Vorticity. Vorticity basically denoted by zeta. So vorticity is nothing but usually we define this as two times of rotation, right? Twice the rotation. So vorticity is basically given as uh, two times of rotation, right? Usually we define in this way, right? Or uh, for two-dimensional case for 2D flow. Uh, we simply write zeta is equal to two times of w z. So this is nothing but uh, whatever do v y do x minus do u divided by do y. Just simple term you will getting that is called vorticity. This is vorticity. So vorticity is nothing but it is talking about the magnitude of rotation present in the system, right? Present in the system. So if vorticity is zero, flow is a rotational. If vorticity is there, flow will be rotational. That's a uh, uh, one thing. Next, go for uh, uh, circulation, right? Till now, we are talking about rotations. So rotation talking about the individual particle rotation, the summation of every uh, in rotation contributed by each particle. If you summarize everything, that is called rotation. Now, circulation, when we are talking about circulation, circulation will be talking about overall rotation, right? So, it will not be uh, taking consideration of particles, basically. So, it is it is looking at the boundary, how much circulation represent. That is uh, basically a circulation. So, so uh, we will define circulation. Uh, so circulation, circulation. So so let's suppose there is a body like this. This is a body, right? If I want to know what is the circulation over this body when flow is coming into contact, I have to focus over this boundary. So when you are coming at the boundary, the flow uh, velocity by which flow will be leaving it will be called tangential to the surface. So tangential velocity component is needed in order to understand that. So, uh, if I draw here, it will be the tangential component of velocity, right? Taken around when when I will integrate this all over the body, right? That is called this a closed whatever body you consider, even this pen you consider in the flow, this is also a closed body, right? So, all around surfaces are closed. So, if I take the uh, integration of tangential component of velocity, right? Around all the this closed curve will give the total circulation, right? So, it will talking about circulation around the body. So. So basically it is defined, uh, circulation is defined as line integral of tangential component of velocity taken around any closed curve, right in the domain, closed contour in the flow domain is called as uh, the circulation. So circulation is denoted by gamma and some book will say K. So circulation is nothing but cyclic integration of tangential component of velocity, right, or V into ds if i consider this elemental distance right is ds so if i say v into ds or you can say v cos theta ds integration around this closed contour right this is known as circulation v cos theta ds that will give the uh, you total circulation uh, in the in the system so the moment I get the circulation in the system, 
right so this will destabilize the pressure distribution around it so pressure distribution may not be uh, so longer uh, symmetrical the moments become unsymmetrical will have a unbalanced force acting on the body that will basically give the normal reaction that we usually term as a lift and we are much more interested uh, in lift so in order to generate a lift we have to introduce the circulation so circulation basically will be generated the moment you are introducing the vorticity in this uh, fellow so the the vorticity got increased around the surface right and so uh, some contribution here what is it was like that if you if you keep on increasing they add up and they they will be forming the circulation so circulation is the nothing but line integration of tangential component of velocity so this is a tangential component of velocity right cos theta term that you are getting and uh, this is known as uh, basically uh, circulation so if if i want to relate this in terms of you know uh, u v and w i can simply write here this is v is nothing but u i v j and w k for three dimensional domain and ds is distance basically so i can say d x i d y z and d z k so if i substitute here circulation is nothing but cyclic integration of u i v j w k with the dot product of d x i d y z and d z k right if you multiply this i will get a sim very simple expression cyclic integration of u d x v d y plus w d z so just you integrate this right you will get the circulation right in a flow domain right It's just simple expression u d x v d y w d z based on your flow diagram. It is a two dimensional. Now only these two components will be there and depends, right? Either in z or x or z or y. If it is three dimensional, then all three should be there and you can integrate between the limits. So it is a closed container. If it is a circular cylinder, then zero to pi you can zero to you know two pi you can integrate, right? Or sometimes they will be asking half the zero to pi limit will be there, right? And if it is a rectangular, then lengthwise you can integrate zero to one, right? Height is one, zero to one, and one to zero like that you can put in solid. So this is circulation, right? What is it? Rotation and circulation. This is regarding that. Uh, so next one is. so these are all interrelated if you look at uh, uh, so uh, these uh, are related as yes, vorticity is two times of rotation vorticity per unit per unit area is called basically circulation so uh, whatever vorticity is present over a particular area that is called circulation that's why velocity and dx term is coming so vorticity will induce the velocity component and area ds if you multiply these two right you will get uh, if divide it you will get uh, basically Uh, uh what is it or if you are multiplying velocity with ds you will get circulation so so uh, circulation is nothing but vorticity into area right area over which uh, vorticity is creating so these are all interrelated rotation is related with the vorticity and vorticity is related to the circulation so all are uh, you know uh, dependent on each other if there is no vorticity there will be no circulation so keep in mind so next topic uh, i will be again returning back to the basic fundamental already we have covered but this is needed for uh, discussing uh, the next topic so next one is geometrical geometrical angle of attack and absolute angle of attack what is the basic difference between these two so geometrical angle of attack talking about geometry so when we are talking about the air fall geometry air fall geometry will have uh, uh, all those terms right mean camber line chord line right uh, thickness then we can define with respect to that angle so only one angle we know that is called angle of attack that angle of attack is between chord line and and free stream direction so chord line is a part of geometry so that by angle of attack can also be termed as geometrical angle of attack so so if i draw the air foil here so this is an air foil right so approximately this is the uh, chord line if i say this is a chord line and this is the free stream direction right so this is a free stream flow direction or i can i can say relative wind angle between these two is known as 
alpha right uh, there is another line if you draw a tangent over this curvature right if you draw a tangent over this curvature right this is known as zero lift line so zero lift line is nothing but is a line parallel to which any flow will produce zero lift so if i make this flow parallel to this i will not be getting any lift so uh, lift is basically generated because of this curvature if at the moment if i put the tangent over the curvature this will become almost aligned with the flow so if anything is aligned with the flow it will not be generating any lift so in order to have a lift we should have certain you know angle only then we can have lift so zero lift line is a line parallel to which any flow uh, uh, generates zero lift right so zero lift line so angle between zero lift line and free steam direction is known as absolute angle of attack so here alpha is geometrical geometrical angle of attack and alpha a is known as absolute absolute angle of attack is that clear so geometrical angle of attack is the angle between the chord line and free steam direction we call it geometrical angle of attack and absolute angle of attack is the angle between zero lift line and free steam direction this is a very uh, basic uh, uh, you know uh, concept behind it so alpha a is greater than alpha basically right uh, so you can relate so sometime uh, you know effective angle will also come right when it is going for three dimensional domain when uh, it is becoming a part of wing it is a two dimensional case right when f1 is two dimensional when it is going for three dimensional right alpha will not be alpha always there alpha will get decreased because of the downward you know, cross flow all right uh, in the wing so there is a span wise uh, flow in the wing which will be you know mixing with the top flow at the tip and generating the vertices and because of that uh, some downwards will happen downwards will reduce the angle of attack so whatever the angle left with that will be effective for generating the lift so effective angle of attack will be lesser in the case of wing compared to the foil f foil it will be alpha but wing it will be alpha minus alpha i induced uh, that will be induced by the uh, induced drag so uh, that is basically the part of you know uh, aerodynamics uh, that I am not covering here. Here just uh, what to what that is needed for introduction to aerospace engineering subject. So I am closing this section here. Uh, let's uh, go for two important uh, topic. Then after that we will return back again. Uh, one topic is called thrust curve, right? Thrust curve. Thrust curve. So when we are talking about thrust, right, so aircraft engine, that is basically we talk about jet engines. Jet engines are rated in terms of thrust. So jet engines are basically designed to provide the necessary thrust to the aircraft to make it fly or cruise, right. So the rating of the jet engine will be in Newton or kilonewton, maybe 1000 kilonewton, maybe 14,000 kilonewton or 14 kilonewton, right, uh, 14 mega newton right it depends on the uh, type of aircraft in which you are using engine so engine depends on the uh, the aircraft uh, for what purpose you are using based on that you can select the engine power means power means rating so turbojet rating will be you know given in the terms of thrust that will be in terms of newton uh, so before going to that i i mentioned somewhere right force is acting on the aircraft so if it is a steady steady level flight all right usually for the uh, sake of performance calculation we always consider the steady level flight so if it is a steady level flight then thrust generated or thrust required will be just sufficient enough to counter the drag and lift will be exactly equal to the weight if that is condition if i say thrust is equal to drag and lift is equal to weight if this condition exists i can say that is a steady uh, level horizontal flight and for most of the performance calculation we assume like it's a steady level flight so thrust is equal to drag so as we are talking about the thrust curve right and we are assuming the steady level flight right so we can say the thrust required is nothing but drag and drag is nothing but half rho v square s into cd where if you look at density is a constant parameter in compressor flow and this is wing plane form area geometry right depends on cd uh, basically uh, is a, is a also a constant so rho s and cd is constant so you can i can directly say thrust required totally depends on velocity square right velocity square so as velocity is increasing my thrust requirement uh, uh, will also be increasing if i want to uh, accelerate my aircraft i need to generate 
larger thrust right the thrust requirement will be more so in order to generate larger thrust i need to uh, one large amount of fuel so specific fuel consumption will increase basically so thrust required you look at uh, is, uh, is a quadratic equation if you want to find out it will be a quadratic equation in terms of velocity right but but for the jet engine basically thrust available from the jet engine jet engine was what it will do it will be generating thrust at a steady state so thrust available from the engine will be constant because uh, engine is having uh, rotary components those will be rotating at some that rated uh, you know rpm like uh, compressor may be rotating at 20000 rpm then turbine will be rotating somewhere 10000 rpm and will not be causing that rpm because of the material considerations because uh, when it is higher rotational speed uh, chances of mechanical damage will occur uh, right in the in the uh, engine that we don't don't want so to avoid that we already fixed a certain maximum speed at which we can operate those turbo machines so uh, so they will uh, may say aircraft engine will be generating the thrust in a static condition and the thrust available from the engine is almost constant for all the altitude right it, it, it will not vary right thrust available from the engine will not uh, too much vary with the uh, density variations right uh, so if you look at the thrust required it is it is basically a uh, quadratic equation with velocity so if i plot it here thrust required with the velocity for jet engine i am talking about jet engines right so it will be a quadratic equation i will get something like this this is a thrust required thrust required curve it is something like this so if you look at this right initially when you are just starting uh, right from rest a point will reach when you attend something attitude initially thrust requirement is high because you are accelerating from the ground right the moment you are fully airborne thrust requirement will be less because speed already catch up when a speed will catch up uh, the requirement is low then further increase in uh, you know accelerating then you will accelerate again when you are accelerating right at faster speed right velocity is increasing right so because of that thrust requirement is further increasing so this is this uh, this uh, left right side is representing accelerated flight right that's called cruising right this just starting from rest then uh, it has attained some uh, approach height right from the ground takeoff height at which minimum thrust requirement and after that further thrust requirement is uh, increasing so the thrust required uh, similarly if you look at the thrust available uh, for jet engine thrust available is i am drawing it i said thrust available from the engine uh, is almost constant right it's almost constant at a particular location but thing is that as we go high uh, density will decrease right that already you studied from the atmosphere uh, uh, chapter density decreases when density decreases aircraft engine may not be able to suck the sufficient amount of air inside because of that what will happen the rating miss was thrust generator will reduce as we are going up so at sea level uh, uh, let's suppose this is a sea level condition where i am getting uh, constant thrust at this if i am going somewhere 3 kilometers it got decrease uh, if you are going to 6 kilometer it got decrease so with the increase of height your thrust available is decreasing right but but you look at the thrust requirement is keep on increasing right so to, to cope with this right to cope with this your engine should be uh, strong enough right to produce thrust available higher than the requirement right to make your aircraft fully airborne so this is the thrust available for jet engine and this is the thrust requirement for the jet engines so so uh, if you draw both on a single diagram right you can draw in this way so uh, i can i can i can say here thrust available or thrust required so thrust available will be something like this this is a thrust available this is a thrust required for this jet engine right is that clear this is regarding this now if you go for the power right so thrust so keep in mind only jet engines rating will be in terms of thrust if you are talking about propeller driven aircraft or turboprop the rating will be in terms of thrust power so we need to define in terms of power so let's go for power curves uh, this is thrust curve next one is uh, what is the time now okay we are having sufficient time so power curve so power required basically is nothing but thrust required into velocity right or you can say drag into velocity clear or not drag into velocity so already we have proved that drag is directly proportional to v square so power required is nothing but uh, vq 
right power requirement uh, is direct proportional to vq so we'll get cubic kind of you know uh, behavior of the power required right uh, uh, for uh, the type of aircraft right so first i will be talking about the propeller driven right propeller driven so in propeller driven basically we are using a propeller and propeller is uh, is generating uh, you know uh, thrust like it is taking some certain amount of air inside right compressing it and expanding at faster rate and to provide the necessary thrust to power right but thing is that when we are operating the uh, propeller at higher altitude right density got decrease because of that flow will be slightly retarded right its velocity will be lesser compared to uh, in uh, you know uh, at sea level so a moment will come when we are uh, you know accelerating at particular altitude separation will occur at the tip of the propeller if that happens propeller may not be able to suck in sufficient amount of air uh, right to provide the thrust power so it will uh, lose the what we say uh, the thrust power generated and 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 there is a there is a limitation that is called uh, efficiency of propeller so propeller is effective only up to 85% so if the propeller will be somewhere around 85% so there is a altitude limitation with turbo prop right we can exactly we cannot go for higher altitude because of this problem stalling at uh, the tip of the propeller so so if we look at this uh, power available right uh, uh, for a uh, propeller driven aircraft will be efficiency propeller into power es so uh, here pes is not the word equivalent equivalent shaft power shaft power so so shaft may be rotating at faster rate right if that rate rpm if you if you calculate the power that will be higher but out of that only propeller is able to generate uh, thrust um, power of some value that is usually uh, if you look at the propeller efficiency most of the practical range will be hardly 0 0.85 0.85 to 0.88% means 85 to 88% not more than that so highest possible uh, propeller efficiency is just 88% so whatever equivalent shaft power uh, is getting uh, generated 88% of that is av actually available for propelling uh, your aircraft right so at sea level it will be high because at sea level we are having sufficient you know uh, oxygen uh, means uh, air present so it will be generating maximum possible power but as altitude increases right because of the separation uh, phenomena at the tip of the propeller my power available will decrease but power requirement if you look at is basically a cubic curve so if i draw this right basically for this uh, uh, propeller driven aircraft so i will be drawing here so if i draw so this is velocity and this is the power available and power required both i am taking at one place for propeller driven aircraft so uh, power required is cubic curve basically so so what you are getting is something like this uh, you will be getting so this is uh, the power required all right if you look at the power available uh, so in sea level condition condition will be maximum maximum power available will be present this is at sea level sea level condition rated power rated power all right at sea level condition is this but uh, aircraft will fly in actual condition so in actual it is coming like this so this is the power available this was also power available right at altitude and this much loss is happening right if you look at this this range this loss of power loss of power due to efficiency of propeller due to efficiency of propeller this much loss of power will happen if aircraft is flying at altitude and at sea level it will be generating this much but at altitude only this much is available right so this is power available this is power requirement for the propeller driven aircraft was the minimum power right minimum power condition is here right at this vertex if i draw this is the power required minimum condition here it will be minimum condition so minimum power requirement will be when aircraft is steady level flight right it's not accelerating right so it is just uh, cruising at constant velocity at that point i will have minimum power requirement if i am accelerating it power requirement will keep on increasing so 
the difference between these two will give the excess power which is required to make your aircraft to accelerate right if this is less my aircraft will not be accelerating this is regarding the propeller driven aircraft so if i uh, draw for uh, the jet engine right so jet engine again same thing right same story for jet engine so jet engine if you look at uh, thrust is basically uh, sorry power requirement is equal to thrust into velocity right i will get almost vq here also uh, but uh, in thrust available we have seen is almost constant for uh, what we say uh, the jet engine but if you multiply with the velocity velocity depends on local properties right so as altitude increases density will decrease so velocity will also get changed and due to which there will be change in uh, power available so <clears throat> So if I draw that, right, so thrust is almost constant, I say, if thrust is constant, so power is basically linear variation with velocity, so power required, if I say, there is a linear variation with velocity, so the power required and power available versus velocity for jet engine, right. So for jet engine, if I draw, uh, it will be power required. Uh, power required is basically P V Q, right? And power available, power available is thrust available into velocity. Thrust available is constant, right? Only it only depends on velocity. So linearly, right? Linear relation with the velocity, right? Power available. So power available, linear velocity with uh, means linear relation with velocity. Power required is cubic relation. So this is power required, right? This is a power required for the jet engine, right? And what is the power available? There's a linear and a, a zero velocity. It is zero. So it is going like this. So this is a power available. Power available. It is cutting at two points right here and here. So this I can say minimum power. And this I can say maximum power. Maximum velocity. Minimum velocity, maximum velocity. And this vortex will be the minimum velocity or you can say the minimum power requirement in the case of jet engine so this is in the case of jet engine this is the power required this is the power available power related that goes to velocity so linear at zero it is zero right and with increase in velocity it will increase this is for jet engine and for propeller already we have seen and propeller i am drawing again here so propeller driven roughly i am drawing here so this is power available and power required so it is like this and like this so this is power available and this is power required here also two points you got right to intersecting point this is b minimum and this is b maximum maximum velocity and beyond beyond that there will be no power available right and we cannot cross this limit and also we cannot cross this limit uh, lower side and higher side right so these are the power curves and thrust curves right for the uh, jet engine and propeller driven aircrafts uh, so uh, i what i will do now i will uh, cover last topic right uh, uh, i think uh, this is also very fundamental and uh, that is needed right so when we are talking about the lift lift is generated to the pressure difference right pressure difference between top surface and bottom surface so so lift and drag coefficient right coefficient right for the airfoil so if you consider the airfoil airfoil will be something like this it is having top surface and bottom surface at top surface pressure will be p upper and this is p lower right so if you draw this over uh, detailed view uh, this is the chord line right chord line this is the free stream direction right this is the angle of attack free stream flow this is the center of pressure and center of pressure i will get uh, what we say total pressure right pressure so uh, instead of cpr just write resultant pressure or pressure force that you will be getting right so this will can be resolved in two components right uh, like this and like this this is called drag and this is called lift this is lift and this is drag and this point is called center of pressure cp so resultant aerodynamic force will be acting only at center of pressure right so look at this is center of pressure so here is the resultant aerodynamic force is acting right uh, this is the resultant aerodynamic force and here is the lift and here is the uh, drag basically drag basically so how to calculate the resultant aerodynamic force so the resultant aerodynamic force is happening due to the pressure difference between top and bottom surface so pressure always acts normal to the surface so 
सो रिजल्ट फोर्स रिजल्ट एरो डायनामिक फोर्स फोर्स एंड कीप इन माइंड दिस लिफ्ट इज इंक्लाइंड राइट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस एट एंगल अल्फा अल्फा दिस अल्फा इज दी एंगल राइट एट विच इट इज इंक्लाइंड uh so resultant uh, force can be calculated 1 by c this is the total chord length right if i represent this is a chord length 1 by c integration uh, i can write in this way 0 to c p lower and p upper along the flow direction that is dx so this is the resultant aerodynamic force in this way you can calculate so p lower p upper dx 1 by c and 0 to c so if uh, this is a uh, total so when you are talking about talking about non dimensional term that is called coefficient of uh, resultant aerodynamic force cpr if you are writing that will be just 1 by c 0 to c cpl minus cp upper into dx so usually in the aerodynamic uh, testing we talk about the pressure coefficients Right, so in terms of pressure coefficient, Cp lower, Cp upper, dx. If you integrate this along the length, that is called chord length, you will get the coefficient of coefficient of uh, resultant aerodynamic force, Cpr. So this is basically Pr. So uh, vertical component will be called lift, horizontal component will be called drag. So we can easily find out now uh, coefficient of lift. And coefficient of drag. If I know CPR, so uh, most of the case, if if chord length is zero, uh, sorry, if chord length is one, then this is not needed. Just zero to one CPL, CPU, DX. You can write CPL, CPU, DX. You can write. So now you can uh, talk about the CL and CD. So CL, CL is nothing but CPR. Right into cos alpha, and CD is equal to CPR into sin alpha. Take right capital R. So I got CL and CD right. The moment I know the resultant aerodynamic force. Now usually we consider the angle of attack is small, and for a small angle, for a small angle, right? Particularly, uh, you you can say cos alpha is equal to one. And sin alpha is equal to alpha. Cos alpha is equal to one, and sin alpha is equal to alpha. So you can now write uh, CL and CD. So CL become just CPR, and CD become alpha times of CPR. So like that you can find out the CL and CD, right? So like when CL is CPR, so I can write CL is equal to one by C zero to C CP lower. Cp upper into dx. This is Cl. So if you multiply this with alpha, that is called Cd. So like that, you can calculate the lift and drag on the air foil, right? Lift and drag on the air foil. So with this, uh, basically, uh, I am closing the today's discussion. If you are having any doubt in these topics which we have covered today, feel free to contact me. Right? I have already. share with you my whatsapp number right so you can make use of it or you can write in the comment section i will be happy to you know resolve all your queries so in the next uh, chap next lecture i will be concluding the second unit of introduction to aerospace syllabus right with the high lift devices only one topic is pending in this so introduction to the high lift devices will be given to you in the next lecture right so please like and subscribe my channel have a nice day good day